Hello, I'm Barbara Archer, a partner with Hightower Wealth Advisors St. Louis. With our varied skills, resources, and experience, our ensemble of wealth advisors help you make a plan, make an investment, make a difference. Today we begin the second of a three-part series to help frame expectations and prepare for the college admissions process. In this part two, the impact of COVID-19 on standardized tests and the admission process. So Andy, thank you for joining me again today. Thank you for having me, Barbara. In light of COVID-19, how will colleges be evaluating students for the 2021 admission season? Differently. Um, and hope more holistically, perhaps, than ever before. Um, there, you know, COVID-19 has wreaked havoc everywhere, and it's wreaked havoc, um, certainly, uh, on college admissions. Um, and colleges uh, and people who work for them are human beings, and they're, they've been hunkered down just like you and I have in their homes, and they're fully aware of the disruptions in everyday life. Uh, they're aware of uh, the fact that students who were planning to go to baseball tournaments, debate tournaments, math tournaments, uh, are no longer doing or have been unable to do those things uh, this past spring. Uh, they're fully aware of the amazing stress that uh, has been caused by cancellations of the ACT, the SAT, SAT subject tests, um, the cancellation of the international baccalaureate exams, all of those things. And they are trying their level best to be as responsive as possible. Um, you know, this has been an incredibly stressful time for uh, students who are about to begin their college careers in the fall because they don't know. Uh, if they can go. Uh, if they can go. <laughs> and I, I read these, I, if you don't mind my saying so, I read these articles uh, about how certain colleges are planning to uh, get going and have kids on campus. And then I uh, read these other articles that say, you don't understand 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds on a Friday and Saturday night may not be able to practice social distancing effectively. So there are a lot of concerns out there um, that are valid. But it is a stressful time. One of the things I think we do at our company is help to reduce stress by providing information. And um, it has been enormously stressful for students who've been waiting to take the ACT only to have it canceled more than once, who've been waiting to take the SAT. What's the status of standardized tests like the ACT and the SAT now throughout this? You mentioned cancellations. I'm assuming they're going to set them up again. You know, there's been um, news just this week. Um, and I don't want to date ourselves, but the, the ACT is unveiling several new tests over the next few months. And the aim, wow. of course, and that the SAT will as well. So the aim of, for both these testing services, uh, quite frankly, is to make a little bit of money, uh, which they need, but also to be sensitive to students' needs and stress and make sure that students have at least one, maybe two opportunities, because a lot of kids take the test a second or third time to uh, improve their scores and uh, get those scores to colleges, um, you know, by the January one deadline or shortly thereafter. Or in certain cases with students applying early decision uh, to get those scores to them, um, you know, in November. Um, so they're being responsive, but that said, um, as a result of this enormous dislocation and almost chaos, an extraordinary thing has happened, um, in our 
country, and I don't know how long it will go on, but the entire Ivy League has gone test optional. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, the University of California system has gone test optional. Now that may is, is expected to go for three or four years because in addition to the problems caused by COVID, there is a growing belief, which you know data for that, you know, there is a cultural bias to these tests. And so the California system is thinking of creating its own test. Um, now it is important for students to understand this that if a school is test optional, it is not test blind. So that means if you've done really well, if you've been able to take the ACT or the SAT and you've done really well compared to whatever the scores are that that, that school uh, typically has as a standard, then by all means, submit your scores. Even though the school is test optional, the fact that you're submitting your scores suggests that you're quite confident in them and, and, you know, may advantage you over those who either sadly have not been able to take the test or don't want to reveal their scores. Okay. Well, thank you. And so one other question I have here, as far as the trends that are occurring in this COVID-19 year, um, do you see increased numbers on the waiting lists, um, increased gap year requests? Uh, what, what does that do also to impact a student's chances for admission in 2021? Yeah, so, so many changes. Yeah, it, it's been amazing. And I think that we saw uh, an increase, increased uh, number of students on waiting lists this year because colleges were taking no chances because they didn't know what percentage of accepted students would actually be able to come, either because okay. they were uh, overseas and there might be some prohibitions there or uh, because of financial hardship or because they or their parents simply felt insecure about sending them away from home in this COVID era. Uh, so there have been increases um, in wait lists. There have been a lot of students uh, taken off the wait list these days. Many, but not all of them, have been full pay students. Colleges and endowments have also suffered and they you know, can use a little bit of replenishment. Um, so that's been an issue. Um, and a fascinating issue as well is that given the uncertainty of both the disease and uh, the openings of college campuses, there have been a growing number of students requesting gap years. And the responses to those requests will no doubt vary because you know, in a, in a given year, in a standard pre-COVID year, colleges would almost automatically grant those requests. But now, if there are a disproportionate number of gap year requests, then you're going to create a logjam for the 2021 admission season, mm -hmm. which will disadvantage students who are going to be rising seniors this year. So colleges have to weigh a lot of some will ask you, okay, uh, if you really want to take a gap year, you're going to have to reapply. Uh, you can submit the same application, but we can't guarantee your space. So, um, you know, well, there is more uncertainty that, that kind of lies ahead in the admission season, and it hasn't been resolved by a long shot. Well, if a student's school has changed their transcripts for this admission season and their extracurricular activities are canceled, um, how does that hurt their chances of admissions to their dream school? Yeah, it shouldn't. Um, I okay. can't tell you how uh, open uh, so many schools have been uh, and understanding, as I said, admissions people are people too. <laughs> and so they've said, look, we understand. We understand that, you know, you couldn't 
play in your softball tournament. We understand that that district uh, uh, competition in science, science fair, was canceled and you couldn't show your science project. But what have you done up till then is going to be important. Um, and in terms of grades, some schools going to pass fail, some schools saying, you know what, we're not even going to have grades for this semester. Colleges are going to view each high school as a separate entity. If this is the way the high school, obviously without any input or, or power from students, uh, chose to grade in light of COVID, that's not the student's fault. And it's not the student's fault that his or her extracurricular activities haven't gone on. So colleges are going to be understanding, but they're also going to want to say, okay, how did you do with your GPA up until COVID? And maybe, uh, you know, uh, the magnifying glass will be uh, on that a little more uh, than the entire year. Well, since you mentioned having that look back to when things were more quote unquote normal, yeah. Um, how far back to schools really look? Do they start freshman year looking at those grades? Is there any advantage to a student whose grades improve over freshman, sophomore, junior year as they mature and become more responsible? Or if they've had a tough freshman year, they're kind of in trouble and it's hard to catch up. What's, what's kind of your advice for those students that are trying to plan for the future? Um, hit the ground running your freshman year. Uh, don't, don't be, as they say, chill. I'm only a freshman. Uh, you know, don't worry about it. Um, I, my, my season Bs, that's what people expect from freshmen. No, they're counted in your GPA. Uh, they're important. Your, your grades are important in your freshman year. Uh, that said, uh, colleges respect an upward trajectory. Um, and your junior year is your most important year. So you want to hit a home run in your junior year, but it's not bad to hit home runs in your freshman and sophomore year as well. Well, thank you. Um, I was going to ask you if you thought the colleges would be open as usual in the fall, but I think you helped address that. There's some, some are saying yes, some are saying no, these children and I know young adults is better than children. Um, will, are they going to wear masks and do socially distancing whenever there's a frat party? Sorry, I have a hard time believing they will. Yeah, how do you drink a keg? With, with <laughs> Lots of straws. Do, yeah, how do you do beer pong with a <laughs> I, you know, that, th this, these are significant hurdles and, um, uh, I wouldn't want to be in the shoes of, uh, you know, a president or a board of trustees of the university making these decisions these days. I, I know there's a great eagerness to move on with life, but I'm sure virtually all of them have um, a deep respect for uh, maintaining the health and safety of their students and faculty and staff. So, um, and the students' families when they get home. A, oh, Great point, right? Obviously. Or visit grandma. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we used to say in television, uh, one thing is certain, the future lies ahead. That was <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and I don't know what that future will bring. So um, for colleges opening in the fall, no doubt some will. Uh, and no doubt some will stay on lock. Well, Thank you, Andy. We appreciate your time and you sharing not only your experience and guidance, but also your views and some current information on college admissions. And I look forward to hearing you in part three, where you will help us discuss the fact that children, young adults, have some time on their hand this summer and how can they maximize it while they are at home. So thank, thank you for... Barbara. And thank you for joining us. I am Barbara Archer with Hightower Wealth Advisors St. Louis, where we help you make a plan, make an investment, make a difference. Now let's all go make a difference.